Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Heavenly Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach the throne of glory. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for another day in the land of the living. We ask you, Almighty God, Jehovah, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us for all of our sins, wash us in his precious blood and make us clean, and fill us right now, Almighty God, Jehovah, with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you, Almighty God, Yah. Amen. Today in our modern day world, we are bombarded with superhero movies and television programs, starting with comic books, you know. I grew up reading Marvel comic books, and I, I really enjoy it. But it could be a dangerous thing if a person begins to believe that make-believe is reality. Well, I'm here to tell you that Spider-Man, <laughs> Captain America, Iron Man, the, the mighty Thor, the Incredible Hulk, the Black Panther, and Batman, and, and who else? Superman, and Wonder Woman and all the superheroes that we grew up reading about in comic books are nothing but someone's creation. They're not real. And it's very important that we understand that. But we need to know there was one true superhero that existed and still exists. He's just not here on Earth right now. And that one superhero was Jesus. So let's read about the birth of the one and only true superhero. In Luke chapter 2, verse 8, it says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Uh, verse, that's verse 8. Verse 9 says, And lo, which means behold, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. They were terrified when, they, when this light came upon them and this angel came down. Verse 10, and the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Oh, that's verse 10, verse 11. He says, for unto you is born this day. In the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Third, uh, verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of, of the heavenly host praising God and saying in verse 14, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. So these angels came and allowed these shepherds to know that the Savior of the entire world had just been born. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, whose true name in the Hebrew tongue is Yeshua HaMashiach. So that's why when Christ became of age, he made the statement in John 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see that? 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, in these superhero movies, you always have this scenario where the world is in danger of 
total annihilation or destruction, and the superhero has to save the entire world. You know, Superman has saved the world a zillion times. So has um, uh, Captain America and Spider-Man and, and the Avengers <laughs> in these make-believe scenarios. But Jesus Christ saved the world literally. His blood that he shed at Calvary makes it possible for the human race to be saved into God's eternal kingdom and not face the judgment of eternal damnation in the lake of fire. That's real, okay? That's why Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He says, I'm the only way you can get in there. Only way you can be saved into God's eternal kingdom is through your faith in Jesus Christ and that precious blood he shed for your sins at Calvary. That's why the apostle Peter said in Acts chapter 4 verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby or by which we must be saved. So I'm here to tell you that Captain America can't save you. Okay, Dr. Strange can't save you. The Black Panther can't save you. Spider-Man can't save you. Superman can't save you. Batman can't save you. <laughs> They're all make-believe. They're not real. But Jesus Christ did save you. He shed his blood for you at Calvary, the Son of God Most High. He that had a share in creating the world and all that we see that came into the same world that he created with his Father and the Holy Spirit. Christ saved you. And if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you're going to benefit from that great sacrifice that he made. That's why in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, on down, Paul wrote, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Verse 7, he says, For scarcely, or, or just barely, for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure, or yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare die. Verse 8, But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see that? Jesus died for the world of sinners. We were all lost. We were on our way to hell from the moment we were born into this world. And Christ paid off our sin debt by shedding his very own blood at Calvary. And not only did he do that, he suffered humiliation and shame and excruciating <coughs> an excruciatingly painful death so that you and I could be saved unto his eternal kingdom. Oh, yes, he did. That's why you and I should be willing to walk in his footsteps. There should be nothing that you and I should not be willing to do because of what he did for us. And that's why Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19, he says, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience Toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Verse 20. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, or, or what boast is it if you're being beaten for doing something wrong? He says, ye take it patiently. He says, but if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. That's verse 20, 21. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us. Look at this, saints. Leaving us an, in, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. 22. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. There was no treachery or trickery or deceit found in his lips. He was righteous and he died for us so that we would have a chance. 23, it says, who when he was reviled, when they spoke evil of him, reviled not again. He didn't return fire on them. He didn't speak evil of the people who were lying on him. 
when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. That is the most heroic thing that was ever done on this planet, and it happened for real. Not like these make-believe scenarios that we see in these movies. But when you go and watch Infinity Wars and see the Avengers save the world, and you go out believing that's real, then something's very wrong with you, okay? Because that stuff is all make-believe, phony baloney, uh, conjured up with computer uh, CGI technicians. It's not real. But Jesus Christ is real. Jesus died for you. And you better latch on to that. Because if you don't, you're going to die and you're going to have to answer for all your sins. Jesus died so you and I could be saved into his eternal kingdom. That's real. He's the only real superhero. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, that is Jesus, also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So through his death he conquered the devil. Verse 15 says, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetimes subject to bondage. Because Christ died for us, we don't have to fear death anymore. Because there will come a time when he's going to resurrect all who died, all who passed away. He conquered death, okay? And when we jump down to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9, it reads, Then said he, Lo, which means behold, I come to do thy will, O God. He willingly came into this world that he created with his father. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. He came to die and establish a new covenant with the world. Verse 10 says, by the which will we are sanctified, which means set aside for holy use, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. You see that? Verse 11 says, And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. He's talking about the old system that Israel and the Bible had of animal sacrifice. And that animal blood could never take away our sins. Verse 12 says, But this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, set down at the right hand of God. Whew, 13. From henceforth, from that time forward, expecting till his enemy should be made his footstool. 14. That was 13. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. So my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that Jesus is the only real superhero. And if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, right now is the time. Okay? Let us pray. Father God, we ask right now for any, for any people that you have guided to this video and any hearts that you have touched, that you would cause them right now to receive Christ as their Savior because he is the only superhero. And without accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, there is no hope for them, Father. So, Father, I pray that you pour your spirit upon them and cause them to understand that right now and to receive heaven's gift of eternal life, which came in the person of your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's precious name, we thank you, Father. Amen. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, I encourage you to go to paypal.me slash Barton Porter and please give a love gift of whatever you can afford to give. Whatever you give will be a tremendous blessing to me. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.